Hey guys, how's it going? Fred here at Patent Engineering. We are taking a look now at derivatives of log functions and there are a few rules that we're going to go over and we're just going to solve three problems. All right. So this isn't going to be like a theory heavy video. I'm going to show you these four rules that are the most common ones and then we're just going to solve some problems so you get an idea of what to do. So in the pink here, as we usually do for theory related stuff, I, I highlighted it in pink and I just wanted to show you four different rules right here, okay? So the first one on the top left, we have the derivative of ln x, okay? So the derivative of ln x uh, is equal to one over x, all right? Simple enough, something to remember. Uh, and there's a couple different distributive properties that you can use with log functions. So for example, if you have the product of, inside the argument of ln of two functions, for example, uh, e to the x times, you know, one plus x or something like that, you can rewrite that as the, the sum of the two products, uh, both of their logs, okay? So for example, if you have ln AB, that is equal to ln A plus ln B. Looking down in the bottom left, we have ln of A to the B. And with the, the, actually the cool thing about natural log functions or log functions is that you can take this B exponent and you can bring it down in front of the, the ln, all right? And that is actually a really helpful tool when we're, when we're working with log functions. And it enables us actually to solve problems that otherwise we wouldn't be able to, and you'll see that. And the last one here, we have the quotient of A over B inside the lawn, and we can express that as actually lawn A minus lawn B. So those are four rules that we're going to apply when we're solving these three problems, and there are also four rules that you have to memorize. So there's no way around it. You're not gonna get a formula sheet. Remember how lawn works. And the, old, the best way to do that is to solve problems. And by solving those problems, you are going to have no problem remembering those. So let's start with the first one. It's a simple one, and it's, it's kind of building off the, uh, the chain rule, what we did before in, in derivatives. So let's get started. So we have f of s is equal to ln of ln s. Okay, so inside the ln, we have another ln, and this can be confusing for some people, but it's really just a simple application of the chain rule. So we're going to do in our heads our, our u substitution for the inner function, okay? We're gonna pretend that this is just ln u, and we're gonna just differentiate ln u with respect to u, okay? So I'm gonna write that out this time. So like, let's say that we're going to let u equal ln s, okay? And the derivative of ln, now we, we have ln u, right? So this is going to now be ln u, and we're going to say that we're going to take d by du of ln u, okay, is equal to one over u. All right, perfect. And now we're going to go ahead and substitute that u back in, all right? And we're going to do that. And we are also going to, so we're going to do that. We're gonna substitute the u back in, all right? So that is going to give us one over ln s and we're going to multiply that by the derivative of ln s, okay? So what's the derivative of ln s here? Well, the derivative of ln s is one over s, right? Perfect. So that's, that's the question. It's as simple as that, all right? And we just wanted to start off with a nice simple question to give you an idea of just the, the basic derivatives of ln as well as using maybe some of the concepts that we went over earlier, like uh, the chain rule, you know. So let's look at question two, and this one's a little bit trickier. And we have y equals ln times e to the negative x plus x times e to the negative x, all right? So how do we start this one? Well, let's try and clean it up a little bit first. I see that we have a e to the negative x here that we could factor out from the inside. That might make things easier. All right, and this is actually gonna give us a chance to apply the, the second rule here. So let's, let's number these so I can refer to them a little bit better. So that will be th rule three and rule four. So rule two, uh, we have the product of two functions, all right, is equal to the natural log uh, of both of them added together. So let's go ahead and apply that rule here, right? So inside the bracket, we have e to the negative x times one plus x here and we're going to distribute this ln to both of them and add them together. So we have ln e to the negative x, okay, plus ln one plus x, right? And these are equivalent uh, formulas here. We didn't do anything illegal, okay? That's, ju that's just a rule of uh, lons and logs. 
So now what we can do is take this negative x using rule three, and we can bring it down in front of this term here. All right, that's good. And uh, another rule that I didn't include up here is that ln e is just cancels, okay? So ln e cancels, all right? And as well, if you have e to the ln something, that also cancels. So that is just going to actually disappear, all right? Remember that. So this is going to cancel, and we're left with ln 1 plus x. Perfect. So now we're at the point in the question where we can actually start to differentiate. So we've, we've cleaned the question up enough, or we can work with it, and we're going to start that now. So y prime, and we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative with respect to x of negative x is just negative 1. And the derivative of bracket 1 plus x, ln 1 plus x, uh, let's do the u substitution here, okay? So we're going to use the chain rule. So the derivative of 1 over, sorry, the derivative of ln x is just 1 over x. And we're going to use 1 plus x, okay? Because we're substituting back in. And we're just going to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is 1 plus x. So the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of x is 1, okay? So we are left with negative 1 plus 1 over 1 plus x. Perfect. And can we clean that up in, in any way? Well, we could. We could perhaps common denominator these two. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's multiply top and bottom here by 1 plus x. And we should be left with, because as we can see, this 1 and this 1 are going to cancel. We should be left with x over 1 plus x. And that is the answer to the second question. So a little bit trickier, right? But showcasing some of the rules that we, that we want to get across here, which are the, the, long, the long rules that we included up in the top. So with that being said, let's move on to the final question here. This one is a little bit trickier. And it's y equals x to the power of sine x. Now, this doesn't look like a log function, right? It doesn't. However, we can make it a lot easier for us to solve if we use the power of the log rules in order to solve the question, because otherwise it would, be, it would be tricky. So let's go ahead and apply ln to both sides. So this is, this is just a trick that you can use, is you can take the natural log of both sides of the equation without changing what the equation means, okay? So let's take ln of y, okay? Lonning both sides equals ln x to the sine x. Now I can take this sine and I can move it down in front, all right? So let's go ahead and do that first. So we're, again, applying rule three. Very good. Okay, so now what can we do here? Well, we can start to take the derivative uh, of this function now, okay? And we'll take it with respect to x. Okay, so what that means is that we're going to have to implicitly differentiate part of this equation because we're left with ln y here, okay? So we're going to take the derivative of ln y with respect to x, okay? So that's going to be one over y. And we can't forget our dy by dx, right? Because in the last section, we did implicitly differentiate. And now we have a product of two functions here, right? So we're going to need to use the product rule. So let's start with the first term. The derivative of that is cos x, okay? So we have cos x ln x plus derivative of ln x times sine x, which is going to be 1 over x. Perfect. Can we, uh, can we simplify this anymore? Yes, absolutely we can. Factor, multiply this y. All right, perfect. Now what we can do in our final step, just to kind of, uh, to simplify a little bit more, all right? And as we've done before with implicit differentiation, okay, we're solving and isolating for dy by dx. That's the goal here, is we're going to take this y, all right, and we're going to sub back in our initial expression. And once we do that, we'll have the entire right side of the equation in terms of x, which is exactly what we want. Right now we have it in terms of two different variables and that's not something that, that we wanna work with, okay? So subbing this back in, okay? We have x to the sine x, okay? Times cosine x ln x plus sine x over x. Okay, 
And that's the third question done. Thanks for watching that, guys. This is the only video we're going to do on this topic um, because there isn't really much more other than doing a lot of practice problems in this. this. There's not a ton of theory. There are a couple proofs, but I think for this course, all you're going to need to do is really just know how to manipulate this. And in Calc 2 and 3, this is also really, really important. This is always going to come up. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Come back for more.